guys. Um, as you know, I'm gone today, but I just feel it's important to get through this stuff because if we can get through this and do a little bit Friday, then we have the chapter done, okay, rather than coming back to it <coughs> um, after the midterm. Okay? So we're going to look at scatter plots. Um, scatter plots show us the relationship between two things. So if you look over here, we're going to look at the relationship between our studied and grades in an exam received. So there's the eight, there's Larissa and Mitchell and Annie and Louise and JJ and Willie and Kaya and Jamie. Okay, and let's just presume we're going to look now at how much each of you study and then the mark you got. Okay, so again I'm going to make it up. But let's say Larissa studies for 10 hours. Okay, so I go to the hours, she studies for 10 hours, and she gets 55%. So I go to 10 on the x-axis, or the hours axis, and I go up to 55, and I mark it with a point. Okay, so that's where, what Larissa got, she got 55 after studying 10 hours. If we look then at Mitchell, let's say he studied 12 hours, so about here and he got 65%. There you go. Let's say Annie, she might have studied two hours because she had a match. So she studied two hours, but she only got 25%. Okay, you can start seeing a trend here. And Louise, well she studied 15 hours, and she got 70%. And JJ being the hard working man that he always is, well, he studied 20 hours and he got 95%. And then we have Willie, let's say Willie studied 8 hours and Willie came out with 45%. And Kaya then did her usual hard work at 17 hours and she got 80%. And last, we have Jamie, and Jamie did 11 hours, and Jamie got like 53%. Can you see a trend? Can you see a kind of a shape emerging? Okay. That's a sc scatter plot. We'll get into this now later. This is called correlation. Okay, we'll get into it in a few minutes. Um, we're looking for the shape to describe is there a correlation. A correlation means is there a relationship between them or not. Okay, We can see a, a distinct shape here so there is a relationship but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, if you want to take down your homework it will be on the screen in 10 seconds. Okay, let's, now we're going to look at correlation. Correlations run from 1 back to 0 to minus 1. Okay, so it's run from 1 to minus 1. Anything from 0, or well, anything from above 0 to 1 is called a positive correlation. And anything below 0 down to minus 1 is a negative correlation. And at 0, you can say there's no correlation. The closer your correlation is to 1, the more of a relationship there is, the more of a positive relationship there is. The closer it is to minus one, the more of a negative correlation there is. So let's take, for example, a positive correlation. A positive correlation of one will look like this, of exactly one you know, will look like that. We can see a dead straight line. So that's a perfect positive correlation. So that would be exactly one. Something like a correlation of 80 so there wouldn't be as much of a relationship, or sorry, not 80, 0.8 might look like this. So we can make out the line, but it's not as distinct. Okay? So again, it might quite be 1, it might be 0.8 or 0.7.
something like this then you know we can kind of make out you know a, a line or a shape but it, it's not that clear so maybe that's a correlation of 0.4 so we're getting closer to zero Correlation like this, oh, we can kind of make out, you know, a slight kind of a tendency for the for the, the plot to go that way. So maybe, you know, there's a correlation here of point one, or sorry, um, yeah, point point one. And on something like this. We can see no tendency for a line anywhere. We can see there's no, you know, there's no shape of it going that way or that way. So that would be a correlation of zero. Okay, so you can't see any line. And the opposite way then. That would be a perfect negative correlation. So that would be a correlation of minus one. We had something like. This may be a correlation of minus 0.8, something like this might be a correlation of minus 0.4, and again, if we kind of can't really make out a line, just something like that, maybe minus 0.1, okay? Now, if we get on to these correlations, what does it mean? You know, positive, negative, and none. Well, let's take, for example, um, the one we did already, the hours, the hours here that you study versus the percent you get. Well, the more hours you study, so the more hours you spend studying or the higher amount of hours you spend studying, the higher your percent. So if, if on the x-axis, if the x-axis, your result or your, I suppose your number gets bigger, and this gets bigger, well then it's a positive relationship. So the more hours I study, so once I go this way, then the higher my result. So basically, if I study this many hours, I get this. If we have a positive relationship, then if I study more hours, I get a higher percent. And that's why the slope of the line goes this way, a yeah, positive slope. If we look at something like, um, let's say sprinters, okay, so the times they finish by the hours they train. Okay, so probably you'd be presuming here the more time they spend training, the quicker their their finishes, so the less the smaller their times are. So let's say Usain Bolt, he spends a massive amount of time training. So he's spending a load of time training. His time then should be pretty low. Okay, so a lot of hours training his time is low. Whereas someone else who doesn't spend much time training, okay, so closer to zero on the hours, well his time is going to be high. And you have all these other people, you know, training to here this many hours, so he gets this time, this many hours, this time. So you see, there's a clear correlation, there's a clear relationship between the hours you train and the time. But this time, it's a negative correlation. So the more hours you train, the less your time is in the race. Okay, that makes sense? I hope so. The last one then we look at no correlation. So let's look at the hours you spend studying okay, and the times you get in a race. Well, I suppose common sense would say if you study a lot, it's not going to make you any quicker or slower, or if you don't study a lot, it's not going to make you any quicker or slower, you know, run the 100 meter race. So, again, let's say Larissa studied 10 hours and she ran this fast, okay? So she ran the 100 meters in 15 seconds. And Jamie, on the other hand, studied a lot less, but he ran it. But then, say, Kaya studied a lot more, but she and um, Louise didn't study at all, but, but then. Annie studied a lot. Okay, so you can see there's no real pattern emerging. There's no, there's no, um, I suppose, 
we can't see a line go down this way, we can't really see a line going down that way. The, the dots are just all over the place. If they are all over the place, well then there's not, very, there's not a very strong relationship between the two. There's no relationship between how much you study and how quick you run. So we would say there's a correlation zero or very close to zero. Okay.